invalid in perpetuity, we enact, determine, decree, and define, that if ever at any time it shall appear that the Roman Pontiff, prior to his promotion or elevation as Cardinal or Roman Pontiff, has deviated from the Catholic faith or fallen into some heresy, the promotion or elevation, even if it shall have been uncontested and by the unanimous assent of all the cardinals, shall be null, void, and worthless. It shall not be held as partially legitimate in any way. Those thus promoted or elevated shall be deprived automatically and without need of any further declaration of all dignity, position, honor, title, authority, office, and power. No one at all, therefore, may infringe this document. If anyone, however, should presume to attempt this, let him know that he is destined to incur the wrath of Almighty God and of the blessed apostles Peter and Paul. St. Antoninus, St. Robert Bellarmine, and St. Francis de Sales all teach that a heretic cannot be a valid pope. St. Robert Bellarmine, quote, A pope who is a manifest heretic automatically ceases to be pope and head, just as he ceases automatically to be a Christian and a member of the church, wherefore he can be judged and punished by the church. This is the teaching of all the ancient fathers, who teach that manifest heretics immediately lose all jurisdiction. St. Francis de Sales, Doctor of the Church, quote, Now when he, the Pope, is explicitly a heretic, he falls ipso facto from his dignity and out of the Church. St. Antoninus, 1459, quote, In the case in which the Pope would become a heretic, he would find himself by that fact alone, and without any other sentence, separated from the Church. A head separated from a body cannot, as long as it remains separated, be head of the same body from which it was cut off. A pope who would be separated from the church by heresy, therefore, would by that very fact itself cease to be head of the church. He could not be a heretic and remain pope, because since he is outside of the church, he cannot possess the keys of the church. There have been over 40 anti-popes in church history, men who claim to be valid popes, but who are not canonically elected. Some of these anti-popes even reigned in Rome for periods of time. Benedict XVI is a manifest heretic. We have proven this without any doubt. He teaches that our Lord may not be the Messiah, that the Old Covenant is valid, that Jews and others can be saved without believing in Christ, that schismatics and Protestants don't need conversion, that non-Catholics are not bound to accept Vatican I, that Protestant monasteries should be formed, that Protestantism itself is not even heresy, that Mass is valid without any words of consecration, that infant baptism has no purpose, that the dogma on the Mass is corrupt to the core, that Scripture is filled with myths, that the false religion of Islam is noble, that pagan religions are high, that salvation can be had outside the Church, that Catholic dogmas need to be purged, that Vatican II rejected Catholic teaching on religious liberty, that the unity of the Church does not exist, and that the resurrection of the body will not occur just to name a few. According to the teaching of the Catholic Church, Benedict XVI is not a Pope, but a non-Catholic anti-Pope whom Catholics must completely reject. He presides over the new religion of Vatican II, a counterfeit Catholicism that has abandoned the Catholic Church's traditions and dogmas. And one of Benedict XVI's main characteristics is that he is a deceiver. While he teaches undeniable, astounding, and manifest heresies, one of the ways by which he has convinced so many that he is a conservative is that among these astounding heresies in his writings, there are many conservative passages. But this is nothing new. Pope Pius VI pointed out that heretics inspired by the devil have always used such tactics to inculcate heresies and deceive people. Pope Pius VI pointed out that camouflaging the heresies in statements that are ambiguous or seemingly conservative or contradictory was the tactic of the heretic Nestorius and that Catholics cannot allow heretics to get away with this or deceive them by it. They must hold such heretics to their heresies regardless. Heretics have always used ambiguity and deception to insinuate their heresies and make them seem not quite as bad. In fact, the more deceptive the heretic is, usually equates to how successful he is for the devil. 
The heretic Arius effectively spread his denial of the divinity of Christ because he impressed them with his appearance of asceticism and devotion. Pope Pius VI taught that if someone veils a heresy in ambiguity, a Catholic must hold him to the heretical meaning and denounce the heretical meaning which is camouflage in ambiguity. But this is only common sense. If a man says that he is against abortion, but repeatedly votes in favor of it, he is a supporter of abortion and a heretic. The fact that he sometimes claims to hold church teaching against abortion means nothing. Likewise, the fact that Benedict XVI says some conservative, ambiguous, or contradictory things doesn't change the fact that he teaches astounding heresies and is not a Catholic. Benedict XVI is one of the most wicked men in human history.